do want to thank Master Davis for the opportunity to come and share God's Word. I am a reluctant speaker, if you know me very well. And so uh, I certainly didn't want to come here this week, but um, it has been a blessing nonetheless. So thank you for that. Uh, in Bible study on a Wednesday night back in Golden City, I've been doing a series on thinking like a servant. And I uh, have got sort of the, the outline basics from uh, Pastor Bax, and I give him thanks for that. But uh, then sort of added a lot of things myself in regards to, to the, um, the series that he has done. And it's been a series that has convicted me probably more than most series. You know, I'm preparing and writing away, and, and uh, I'm feeling terrible as I'm doing it, knowing that, uh, you know, I've got to get all this stuff worked out myself first. And so, um, what I thought, I was actually imagining at this stage of the conference to be like about three college students and a couple of lecturers and maybe a couple of pastors, so we've just been a, a little huddle, you know, as we're doing this. So it's a little bit more surprising that there's as many here. But I do believe if you're here, you're probably um, the type of person that needs to hear something like this anyway, and it should be, I trust that an encouragement to you, as it certainly has been to me. And so we're not going to be in Hebrews 11 this morning, this afternoon. <coughs> so I am working. Pardon? Is the mic working? Yeah, the mic's working. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about actions in the Christian life, and that's what I've been focusing on. But there's more, more than just actions, and that's what I want us to consider. And so if you'd like to turn to Romans chapter 12, and verse, Romans chapter 12, and I will look at verses 1 and 2 in a moment. Something that has become increasingly evident to me over the years is the need to have a mind of a servant and not just having the actions of a servant. It's just not enough to do the things that you ought to be doing, but it's just as important to make sure that you have the right attitude while you're doing it. And if you've served the Lord for any amount of time, you'll know that's a real challenge to have the attitude that matches the actions. And in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, we see these two aspects of servanthood. That there's a need for the right actions as well as right attitudes. And that's what I want us to consider this afternoon, and that is thinking like a servant. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, we read this very familiar verse where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That says here. And here we have the concept of us presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. And that is an essential part of being a servant. You have to be willing to do things. You have to actually get out there and serve in a ministry or perform and play an instrument like I was willing to do this morning. <laughs> and, you know, regardless of your talents, you do something. All right? But we're all aware that when it comes to service, there are actions involved. But then in verse 2 we read this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, it says there. And so we have the aspect that there is a need for our minds to be renewed. We need to have our mind changed so that it actually thinks or we think like the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are thinking like the Lord Jesus Christ, as we learn in 
Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And we know that was one of humbleness and someone who was a servant. And so there is the attitude or the need to be thinking like a servant, as well as having those actions of a servant as well. And it's, as I said, it's been, it has become glaringly obvious to me how that is so important. It's just not enough to act, there needs to be the thoughts. Because if we are only acting like a servant, but we're not thinking like a servant, <coughs> As time goes by, we're going to become very bitter and very disheartened in the service of our Saviour. And I'm sure each one of us would be able to think of at least one person right now where you can go back maybe a number of years and you can look at them from the distance and you would have thought to yourself, what a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at them. Look at how they sacrifice so many things for the Lord. Look at how they put so much time and effort into doing the things of God. And what a wonderful servant. And so from a distance we see, wow, that's someone I want to be like. Little did we know, as they are performing all these wonderful actions, there's something wrong on the inside. <coughs> and they're getting bitter towards those they're ministering to, they're resentful for the way people have been treating them, they're angry with what's happening in their sort of life, and so they're going through all the motions of being a lovely servant, but they're getting terribly bitter on the inside, and to the point where they just throw it all away, and now they do absolutely nothing when it comes to Romans chapter one verse, uh, Romans chapter twelve verse one. They're not doing that now. They are a living sacrifice. They're not serving the Lord. And you talk to them and they talk about the people they actually work with, the bitterness in their heart, they're, they're angry with the way that they treated them and did this and did that. There's a, there's a terrible attitude towards those ones they once ministered with and for. That's a disaster, isn't it? And it's all throughout our country. God is just as interested in why we do something as what we actually do. The motives for doing something are just as important. Or, <clears throat> probably taking that even more uh, further, our attitudes while we're doing something is just as important as the achievements that we may have to get. What's the point? of achieving us wonderful things for the Lord. While inside, we're comparing ourselves and we're so proud because we know we're better than everyone else or, or we're angry with that person because of the way that they've been treating us or, or we're bitter about this person and we're home and we, you know, we've just had a, a wonderful time of seeing God be, uh, use us in the kids' club and then we get home and we whinge about all the leaders and not everything about that and we have a terrible attitude. What's the point? See, real servants serve God with the right attitude. And I think we've missed that. Lot. We concentrate on the actions and not the attitude. And our question is asked, <clears throat> How do you know if you have a servant's heart? How do I know if I have a servant's mind? Well, the answer is by the way that you respond when someone treats you like a servant. That's how you know. You know, how do you actually react when you are treated like a servant? Servants are taken for granted. Servants are thanked. Servants are bossed around. Servants uh, are considered as inferior to everyone else. That's how real servants are, are treated. And so when someone treats you like a servant, do you respond like a servant because that's your attitude? Or you fire up. Ooh. You know, that's when you find out if you really have a servant. And this afternoon, I want to look at, I'm not going to tell you how many because then I can stop it when I want. But I'm going to look at them. I asked Brother Rats, how many 
how many points should I have today? I won't tell me how many said. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, 